What's up, Sean? What's up, Jason? Thanks for having me on again, man. I'm ready to do this mock draft. How's everybody doing out there in Mike Drop Mafia land? I'm living a dream, man. One nightmare at a time. Oh, you sounded <laughs> loud. All of a sudden, I must have had my earphones up all of a sudden. It like blew my eardrums out. I'm like, I must have had the headphones turned the whole way up. Sorry oh, about that. No, that's my fault. I had them like blasting in my ear. I'm like, oh, shit. But anyway, guys, we're here. We're back. What's up, Wesley Boyd? What's up, Miss Pittsburgh? What's up, Tyrone? What's up, everybody? As we move through the show, make sure you're hitting the shit out of that like button, beating it up like you own it. And uh, we're going to continue with a mock draft tonight. Uh, so we're going to get that. We are 14 days away from the draft. Uh, you've seen Sean the picks change for the Pittsburgh Steelers over and over and over. And uh, it becomes messy, man. It really becomes messy. Uh, but, hey, we're going to give our mock drafts. We're going to have no trades in these mock drafts tonight. Uh, so you guys chime in with what you're thinking uh, as we roll through. And we're doing our picks. And uh, we'll talk about each player uh, as we go here a little bit. Um, and we'll just do it that way and kind of roll. Uh, and we're not giving you every other team's picks. That's like insanity. Uh, that's hundreds of players. So we're not doing that tonight. Uh, but we are definitely going to give you our seven around full mock draft uh, for your Pittsburgh Steelers. So uh, what's up, Pittsburgh Reels? What's up, Miss Pittsburgh there? Hey, what do you say? It's about time, Steeler Nation. Let's ride. Yes, let's weld. <laughs> <laughs> round one i want mims kind of well i don't know if you're gonna like mine <laughs> if you like <laughs> mims so all right sean we're gonna start off guys we're gonna kick it off i want you guys to put your stuff in there too as we go through so sean and i are gonna start off with pick number 20 and that is in the draft we're not gonna do any trades here we'll save that for draft night and talk about the possibility of trades and all that kind of stuff so, Sean, let's kick it off with round one, pick number 20. You, my friend, can start it off, and I'll give you the honors to give your round one, pick number 20 selection, and we'll tinker and talk a little bit about that. All right. Well, I went ahead and started off. Uh, I'm going to go strictly by my list here, you guys. Um, and round number one, drum roll, please. We're bringing, bringing in Amarius Mims from Georgia. Ah, there you go, Amarius Mims. That is what you were talking about there, uh, I believe, Pittsburgh Reels. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was the yeah, – that's who wanted that. Uh, Pittsburgh uh, Reels wanted that also. So, uh, Sean picks pick number 20, Amarius Mims. Sean, why are you going with Amarius Mims? What's your rationale, you think? I think that it's uh, – I think it would be a smart move to go ahead and bring somebody in to jump in on the on – the, and help out with on the offensive line and really get that line beat up. And uh, I feel like, you know, there's some good centers in there too that can fall into the lap of the Steelers that don't necessarily need to come in the first round. I think that the tackle position is number one in my book. Uh, we got to get the monster Mims in there to go in there and help so we can get that run game going, brother. Yeah, I definitely don't hate that pick. Amarius Mims, a big monster beast, dude. I love him. Uh, I think he's a quality player, dude, and I think he would contribute. And, uh, yeah, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers could definitely use to have a guy like that. I mean, it would be a solid damn pick in round one, and I don't think anybody could hate it. You know, that's one of these picks here in round one. Wherever they go, I don't know how you can hate it. I just think a Marius Mims could definitely be uh, somebody that is a real player, man, a real, real player and could definitely be a bookend, just like you're saying, a guy that could be there for a while, you know, even if uh, they're not as fond of Dan Moore Jr. or, you know, whatever the case may be. But that is a good pick, Sean. And uh, I'm going to move into mine. Uh, Wesley Boyd says I can see them going with Barton in the first. Thomas. Well, oh, sorry, Tyler. Uh, good evening. What's up, man? How are you? Beer malls in the house. Folks going to lay back and hear what y'all think. Curious how low the receiver goes. That Mims is a beast. Yes, Sean has so far pick number 20, Amarius Mims. I'm going to write yours down, Sean, as I go. I had your list, but I didn't write it down before show so i'm going to write it down as we go through uh so sean takes amarius mims with pick 20 my first round selection in round one and uh maybe some may disagree with me here 
I'm going to go with Iowa cornerback Cooper DeGene. I think he is a monster. I think he's a playmaker. And I think if he is available at pick number 20, I don't think you can bypass him because I think uh, what is going to happen, a team like the Philadelphia Eagles will swoop in and take him with uh, pick number 21. Uh, I think Cooper DeGene can definitely provide a quality, quality uh, tandem in Joey Porter Jr. and Cooper DeGene. And I think it could be one of the better ones in the NFL and uh, really make this Pittsburgh Steelers defense elite quickly. Uh, I think it would be a real, real monster move. Uh, do you like Cooper DeGene there, Sean? I love DeGene, man. That guy is such a he, – he's he could be a lockdown corner for sure. I mean, he's out there. He's got the lengthy arms and good hands. Uh, he's aggressive. Um, he, he, he had a, you know, he had a few like penalties called on him, but that's not a big deal. The Steelers know how to work with these guys and, and bring him into the locker room and get him into that Steeler mentality. I think that guy would be a solid pick, bro. And if they got him at number one, I would be stoked with that too. I really would. Yeah. I just like his playmaking ability. I think he can make plays, man. Uh, that's, uh, he flies around. He just reminds me of a, a playmaker. That's when I turn on Cooper DeGene's tape, that's what I'm looking at a playmaker. And that's all I leave it at. And, uh, I really like him, man. Definitely really like him. So I go with Cooper DeGene at pick number one, round one, or pick one for the Steelers at number 20, uh, Iowa cornerback. Now we're moving into pick number 51 in round two. Um, This one here uh, could go several different ways, Sean, if you really look at it, uh, it, because this is kind of a pick to where you're starting to see how this draft is starting to play out with the runs at position groups. You're going to start to see what's left still in those high ranking type players. You're still going to, uh, you're going to have a better picture when you get to round two and the Steelers picking at pick number 51. Maybe there's a trade somewhere, but we're not adding that in tonight. So Sean at pick 51, where are you going with this pick in a straight seven round draft? This was a tough one for me. It really was um, because I also wanted to put Cooper DeGene in at number two, but um, I, we don't really see him lasting into that to the no. draft. That long. So I went ahead and I played it safe. I went with a cornerback, Ennis Rick Straw Jr. from Missouri. That guy is also another big playmaker. He's out there and he and he's he's a, I wouldn't I don't know about a lockdown corner, but the guy is a big playmaker. He's a ball yeah. hawk, and we need another guy out there that can take the ball away. When the when the ball goes up in the air, so yeah. I went Rick Todd Jr. I am good pick. Uh, I think he's a quality ball player. Uh, definitely a guy that can make plays. You turn on his tape too, and you see that playmaker, a guy that uh, flies around, and I like that. And uh, it wouldn't hurt. And I think that that seems to be a theme for us, Sean, finding somebody to match up with Joey Porter Jr. for the long term. I know they got Dante Jackson in the Deontay Johnson trade. I like Dante Jackson. But I think that you got to go out there and find the guy that's going to be your absolute future at that position. Uh, I like Corey Trice also, but he has an injury history. So we'll have to see how that all plays out. But I like that pick, Sean. So Sean and I both have taken a corner within those first two. Well, yeah, in these first two picks, I haven't given mine 51 yet. But Sean takes the cornerback out of Missouri at pick 51. And with pick one, he took a Marius Mims at number 20. All right, guys, to recap so far, I've taken Cooper DeGene at number 20. And my pick in round two, pick 51, would be WVU center Zach Frazier. I still think he will be there. I still think the big names will be gone. Uh, Graham Barton, I think that Jackson Powers Johnson will be gone. And I think you'll have a guy lingering around there. Uh, Zach Frazier, for instance, maybe a Van Pran or something. But you will have some guys lingering around there. And I think Zach Frazier is that dog, a former state wrestling champion, a guy that has a tremendous upside, in my opinion. Uh, I think the Steelers are really in love with him, bringing him in on a pre-draft visit, and I really, really like the way WVU center Zach Frazier uh, plays out and how he looks uh, to be that Steeler-type guy for me. So I'm going to go with pick two, or the Steelers' second pick at 51 with WVU center Zach Frazier. Do you like Zach Frazier there, Sean? I love Zach Frazier, bro. And if they can get Zach Frazier, that'd be a true blessing. It would complement the rest of the draft, especially if they can get, like, say, a Marius Mims in there. Imagine Mims with Zach Frazier and, and yeah. uh, Roderick Jones and Darnell Wash. Oh, my God, man, that gets me all stoked. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with Zach Frazier. The guy's a stud. Uh, he's one of the top 
two or three centers yep. that you can get to pick. Uh, you yep. would never even complain. Yeah, I couldn't complain, man. No, no doubt. I, I think there's so much quality in this draft. That's why it is the actually pretty cool to see how this all plays out, Sean. And I don't know what your th thoughts are, but I really, really like the quality of this NFL draft here in 2024. I think there's a lot of quality players, man. I really, really do. There really is, man. This is one of the most, this is one of the more, I don't I haven't been this excited in a long time for a draft. That, that's for sure. I'm, I'm very excited. These 14 days can't go by fast enough, man. I'm ready. Yeah. Uh, Tyler asked uh, not to go off topic in a time like this, but has anybody heard anything and it pertains to the NFL rumor mill in regards to a future Le'Veon Bell senior uh, Pittsburgh reunion? I've heard that, and uh, I just don't think that it'll happen. I think maybe the only thing that I think could happen would they bring him in on a 90-man tryout. That could be a possibility, but uh, I don't foresee somebody being out of the league that long coming back in. Stranger shit has happened, though, my friend. Stranger shit has happened. Uh, so you never know. What's up, Big Stretch? What's up, Pittsburgh Reels? I like the Frazier. That would be awesome. Tyrone, peace from Norfolk, Virginia. Wesley Boyd, I like Frazier. But then again, I might be a little biased because I'm a WVU fan. What's up, Nathaniel <laughs> Sampson? Hey, man, guys. Hey, some of your uh, teams that you root for could be getting a player on the Pittsburgh Steelers, the other team you root for. Uh, so that's always exciting also. All right, guys, let's recap so far. Sean has picked Amarius Mims. Uh, he has taken the cornerback out of Missouri. What was his name again? And it's Rick Straw Jr. Rick Straw. Yeah, I couldn't remember his last name. Uh, all right. So cornerback Rick Straw out of, cor or out of Missouri at pick 51. I have taken so far in round one Iowa cornerback Cooper DeGene at pick number 20. And I have taken in round two at pick number 51 WVU center Zach Frazier. Uh, as we move now down into the start of round three, you're looking at pick 84 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're still searching around here. They've got some steel uh, positional needs. Uh, according to what we've picked so far. And where do you go, Sean, with pick number 84 in your eyes? Pick number 84, we got to go over to the Georgia Bulldogs. We're going to grab, what is it, Cedric Van Pran. That guy there is you a, go. we need that center, and that's the one I'd pick that would possibly be around in the third round, Van Pran. Van Pran, good pick, solid Georgia Bulldog. Uh, center out of Georgia, guys, and I like it. Sorry, I'm writing Sean's as I go, so I have a reference. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you can't go wrong with a Van Pran. I don't think so either. I think that would be another solid pick. So, so far, Sean, you have that right tackle hole being filled if they want to consider that a hole with what they have currently on the roster, which many do consider that the hole. Then you have them taking a cornerback. Then you have them getting another hole filled at the center spot with a Van Pran out of Georgia, another Bulldog, uh, adding to the list of Bulldogs on this Steelers roster. It seems to just be a real thing. Guys from, uh, guys from, oh, uh, shoot, uh, Georgia and guys out of uh, Wisconsin. That it was on the tip of my tongue. I couldn't get it out. But anyway, Wisconsin, <laughs> those two places the Steelers love to go and draft players from. So uh, don't be shocked if they do get more of those guys. They love those programs. Um, so Sean takes Van Pran. What do you like about Van Pran, man? Van Pran, the just the most is that he was a part of the team that the offensive line last year uh, or even the year before when Broderick Jones was out there. He's That was one of the best offensive lines you've seen in the collegiate era like and that I can recently remember, like in recent years. So to me, that shows that these guys have already gelled before and they dominated together. And if we could go ahead and get a few of those guys together in the Steelers squad and just kind of transfer that energy over there and then take over the run game in the NFL, that would be just a monstrous move, in my opinion. And I don't think you can go wrong with these Georgia Bulldog players. No, and I, I agree with you, dude. I think that that's a quality move and I like your rationale for what you're thinking, Matt. Uh, I think that would be an awesome pick. Uh, later, Nathaniel. Glad you won your baseball game, buddy. Um, all right. So pick number 84, Sean takes center out of Georgia Van Pran. Uh, so now I'm going with pick number 84 and I'm going to go here with, uh, Malika, how, however you say it, Malachi, Malachi Corley, 
wide receiver, Western Kentucky. I don't know why I cannot pronounce names today at all again. Uh, but anyway, Malachi Corley, wide receiver, Western Kentucky. Uh, I like him. I think that he could shine in the NFL. I think he could be um, just what the doctor ordered, guys. Sorry, I got a cramp in my leg. Let me stretch it out. But anyway, I think he is just what the doctor ordered for the Pittsburgh Steelers, honestly, at wide receiver, pick 84. I like it. I like it a lot. So um, that would be my pick at 84, and I think he could contribute early and often. And uh, just the sound of Western Kentucky makes me think to myself, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. So uh, I don't know. It just seems like that's where Steelers find uh, those wide receivers from smaller schools, you know, and uh, I really uh, like that. I like that pick, and I like the way uh, I think he could play and fit into the Arthur Smith system and fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, guys, so, so far, let's recap here. Um, Sean takes Amarius Mims at 20, cornerback out of Missouri at 51. Uh, 84, he takes Van Pran at center. Uh, so far, I have in round one, Cooper DeGene, cornerback, Iowa. Round two with pick 51, center, Zach Frazier out of WBU. In round three, number 84, Malachi Corley, wide receiver, West Virginia. All right, guys, so we are rolling here, and uh, now we're hitting into the second pick in round three. So uh, continue to hit that like button. I know this is kind of monotonous stuff as we get through these drafts, but uh, it was by request. A lot of people wanted to see uh, the mock drafts, so uh, here we are doing them, uh, getting them going here. Um, but... Sean, let's stop right here with this pick. I wanted to talk about Malachi Corley just a little bit and uh, what you think of him and what I think of him. Uh, I know he's going to be, I think, your next pick, correct? Yes, I also have him being picked in the third round. It'll be the yes. second third round pick for the Steelers, but I'll have him at, the, yes. at that. Yeah, you have him at 98, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Sean has him at 98, guys. So let's just stop and talk about Malachi Quirley here a little bit. 5'11, 210 pounds. Fits that wide receiver role the Steelers have liked over the years. 79 catches in 2023, 984 yards on 11 touchdowns, averaging 12 and a half a catch. What do you really like about Malachi Quirley? We know he's going to be your next pick, the second pick in uh, round three. So Sean's pick number 98 is also Malachi Quirley. Sean, what do you like about him, and what do you like for uh, the way he could contribute to this Pittsburgh Steelers team? I like the way he can get yards after the catch. The guy's a physical runner. He can he can go up, he can make the catch, and then he can also throw the defensive back on the ground and continue running for 70, 80 yards. The guy's yeah. a playmaker, and that's what, I was, that's what I would really want to bring out there. Somebody that kind of compliments George Pickens enough to where you can't really – Double team our receivers because if you do that, you can leave the other side of the field open for a big play. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to have Molokai, bro. Yeah, later, Pittsburgh Grills. I like it, man. Uh, I think it's a good thing. So, Sean takes Malachi Corley at 98. So, we will write that down, Malachi Corley. And uh, I take him at pick 84. So now we get to my number 98 selection. Sean takes Malachi Corley, University of Western Kentucky, wide receiver at pick 84. Uh, now we are 98, rather, sorry. Now we move into my round three, the second pick that the Pittsburgh Steelers hold at number 98. And I take Karan, uh, a, a men, a menja, a menji. Uh, from Yale, the offensive tackle. I can't say his last name. A M E G A D J I E. He's an offensive tackle from Yale. Uh, I like him a lot. He's a junior, 6'5, 323 pounds, a good arm length, if you ask me, what, 36 and 1 8. Uh, so he's okay. Total score in the combine of a 77. Uh, so I think, uh, uh, you know, athleticism, he ranks up there pretty high. Um, he was all honorable mention, all Ivy League, first team all Ivy League. Uh, so guy out of Yale might be a little bit uh, overshadowed by some of those other players. Uh, do you know anything about this guy, Sean? Um, I didn't watch much film on him or watch anything uh, with Yale. I didn't watch too much uh, college. But yeah. from everything that you're saying, I feel like that's a great sneaker pick. Like um, yeah. somebody people can be sleeping on and maybe somebody that can come in here and bring a, um, a lot of athleticism to the field. That sounds great, bro. 
Yeah, he's light on his feet, you know, and I really like that. And I think that that works well in an Arthur Smith's offense because you're wanting to get guys down the field, you know, to block downfield in that run game. So I like a guy that's uh, light on his feet. He has a good uh, combination of power, speed, and I really, really like that. So uh, that's another reason that I want to take him. And I know Ivy League guys get a little bit overlooked, man, and uh, that's just the way it goes. But uh, I think he could be definitely like you called it, Sean, a sneak, a little sneaky pick. Um, that turns out to be good. And it's an offensive tackle that you don't have to throw in there right away. You still can go with the jones more type combo. Uh, you still found your center early here. So um, definitely somebody that I really, really like. I got to learn how to say his name. Uh, Amija, Amija G, Amija, Amija G. I can't say it right, but we'll <laughs> figure it out. It's a hard last name, man. It definitely is. Uh, definitely is a hard last name. I'm going to have to uh, watch more film on him with volume up so I can hear maybe them say his name. But, you know, uh, offensive linemen that get their name announced usually aren't guys that you want on your football team. <laughs> that's, just, that's the part uh, you don't want on your football team. You want guys that nobody talks about because that means they're doing their job, you know. That's yeah. it. I, I mean, that's just the way it goes, you know. Uh, crazy. Um, but, guys, I really, really like him there. So. Uh, Offensive tackle out of Yale at pick number 98, round three. All right, guys, make sure you're smashing that like button for us here on Steel City Live. I'm being joined by Sean as we're doing our mock drafts. Uh, we'll keep recapping them here as we move through the show. Uh, yeah, bear with us. It's a little monotonous as we go through just reading names. But uh, we'll we'll talk about it a little bit further here after we're done. What's up, 24K? Hey, Jason and Sean, sorry I've been absent lately. It's been crazy nuts around here. Glad I was able to get back in here tonight. Hope you guys are well. I'm doing well. How about you, Sean? What's up, 24K? Glad to have you back, buddy. I'm doing well myself, man. We're just out here grinding. You know, we got to go to work every day. We got our families. Amen. Draft coming up. We're always uh, doing our thing, man. I hope you're doing well, bud. It is crazy, man. I was cutting the grass today, bro, and I let it. It was such a weird combination here late lately. You would have a warm day. And then I was like, oh, okay, I got shit to do. And then you would have all this rain for days. So you're like, man, I can't get out there. It's it's too wet. It's like a monsoon, you know? And dude, my shit just got too thick, bro. It about killed me today. I mean, it was horrible. Oh, I can't wait to move to the new house. It's flat, flat, bro. No hill, flat. I can't wait. No <laughs> doubt. Better for you. Was it snowing over there in Pittsburgh recently the past few days? It snowed here probably. It didn't stick to the ground, but it snowed probably three or four days ago, I'd say. Four days ago. I saw the Pirates playing on TV, the, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and they were they were playing baseball in the snow. I was like, yeah. what? Yeah, they do that often around these parts, bro. It sucks. Wow. Yeah, how about them Buckos, though? They're winning. They're winning. And they're looking good. They just got to hold it together and not fall apart, you know? Just <laughs> That's playing. the question. <laughs> and push through the whole season. That's right. No doubt. Stephen Carpenter misses that cold already. What's up, Stephen? I don't miss the cold. I just don't like the excessive heat. And I don't like cutting grass anymore. I did when I was younger. Uh, I'll start liking it again whenever it's flat. Uh, but this <laughs> hill in the back, I hate it, dude. I hate it, hate it, hate it. Beer Mall <laughs> says that first cut is satisfying. Not today. Not today, bro. I couldn't take it. But anyway. Back again. That's why I got a cramp in my leg because I was literally, it's up and down the hill. And whenever I can't go side to side when it's too high and you got to go up and down the hill, it just kills you. All right, guys, make sure you hit that like button for us as we move through the show here on Steel City Live. This is our regular Wednesday show and we are doing mock drafts. So far, let's recap. Sean with the Marius Mims, cornerback out of Missouri, Van Pran. Uh, with pick 84, Malachi Corley at 98. So far, I have Cooper DeGene, cornerback, Iowa, round two, uh, pick 51, Zach Frazier, center, WBU, round three at 84, Malachi Corley, wide receiver, uh, and round three at pick number 98, Karan out of uh, Yale, the offensive tackle, light feet, good guy. I think it would be a solid player. Now we move to round four. Uh, at pick number 119, Sean. Uh, where do you go with pick 119? And, uh, yeah, let us know. I would go right back to the Georgia Bulldogs 
Go grab that safety, Javon Bullard. That guy is a ball hawking safety, man. And what a great addition that would be to go out there and have some fresh legs running around and grabbing the ball and making big hits because the guy's a hitter too. He's one of those players that he, he doesn't care about his body so much. He's just going to throw that body right in there and, and, and deliver a big hit. And I like players like that. So I wanted Me to too. go. Yeah, I like players that are aggressive like that. You say big hitter. Well, that's I like that. I need that in that defense, baby. I need that in there. I like those hits, and I think we need to see more of it. You know, I really, really think so. And that's a good pick, Sean. Uh, so, Sean, what was what was his name one more time so I can write your pick down? It's Javon, Javon, J-A-V-O-N, Bullard. Yep. Bullard, however you want to pronounce it, depends on where Bullard. you're at. Okay. Yep. And he's in uh, Georgia. Bullard. 119. All right. Out of Georgia. All right. That's who Sean takes the safety out of Georgia. Javon Bullard. Uh, that should be a pretty good pick, man. Uh, I, yeah, I couldn't complain. Definitely not <laughs> getting a safety. I'm on board with it. Uh, so here we go. I have an opposite pick of you and I take a safety also, but I take uh Callum Bullock safety USC. Uh, I like him because I think uh, he has some athleticism. I think he's a little bit rangy. He's six foot two, uh, junior. Uh, he needs to add a little bit of weight. I think. Uh, I think he's a little bit light at one hundred eighty eight pounds. Uh, but I think he's a good prospect, and I think he could fit well, uh, especially playing. You know, opposite of somebody. You know, like a Minka Fitzpatrick, something like that. So I, I think he could do well. I think he could be all right. I'm not saying he's some, uh, you know, world beater, but I just have like a feeling when I watch his tape that I, re I just really like him. You just get those players sometimes. You're like, just like him, man. I, I like the way he moves around. So uh, I go Callen Bullock, uh, safety uh, out of USC. So we both take safeties with pick 19. Uh, so that's pretty cool. The Steelers getting another safety to add to run with the uh, – uh, run with the tandem that they have right now. And that's not including maybe any additions of uh, a Justin Simmons or anything. Maybe that could happen before the draft. You never know. All right, Sean, let's move into round six where the Pittsburgh Steelers hold two picks. This time pick number 178 coming at you from Sean. Where do you got the Steelers going at 178, Sean? They got to go and get the linebacker from Michigan, Michael Barrett. That guy is... Um... Same thing. He runs around. He makes big hits. He 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 can get by the defenders, you know, um, cause missed blocks and stop the run. Um, he's a great at making tackles. The guy's a tackling machine. I would go with, uh, yeah, like I say, Michael Barrett from Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. So, yeah, you're definitely in the wrong chat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Give a kiss. Yeah, you're definitely in the wrong chat, bro. <laughs> What's up, Jamie Carlo? I've uh, been writing these down. Going to check out these prospects. Awesome. Uh, Craig Worlow, man, I was uh, nine when last time when the Pirates won it all. I'm 53. Wow, that's crazy. I don't remember the Pirates ever winning it all, man. That's so weird. <laughs> I wish they would. Big stretch, 357. Man, I really like your guys' pick so far. Gives a good idea of the variety of winning strategies. Absolutely. There's so many options, stretch. There definitely is, man. What's up, Jamie Carlo? Okay. All right, guys, we're caught up on the chat or um, on the uh, chat. We're going to continue to move through. So Sean takes a linebacker at pick 70 or 178, a linebacker um, out of Michigan. Sorry. I wanted to write that down too. All right, guys. Now uh, my pick here in round six with their first selection. I have the Pittsburgh Steelers taking a running back here, and I have them taking Frank Gore Jr., uh, running back from Southern Mississippi. Uh, I think Frank Gore Jr. comes from a pedigree of a stud football player. <laughs> so, hey, I'm down for Frank Gore. Uh, that's just my opinion. I think that uh, he could add and play a little bit and mix in there with Jayla Warren and Najee Harris. Um, you're looking down the barrel of a fifth year option with a guy like uh, Najee Harris. What do you do with that? Uh, so I think the Pittsburgh Steelers find a running back somewhere in this draft and kind of maybe move on if the price tag's too high for a Najee Harris. That's just my theory. I'm not saying whether it's wrong or right. I'm not saying that at all. That's a conversation we've already had. Um, but I think they take and find a running back here. Um, 
as a just-in-case measure uh, with Frank Gore Jr., running back Southern Miss. All right, guys, now we're moving into round six with the second pick uh, at 195 here. This is the last pick the Pittsburgh Steelers currently hold, barring any trades that may happen uh, with the draft. They have no round five selection and no round seven selection. Sean, where do you have them going with their last pick of the draft, pick number 195? I went with Jaden Cremody, defensive tackle out of Mississippi. That's a need, think, man. Yeah, we need a we we got to have somebody in there in case Cam Hayward goes down or you know, somebody to come in and start filling the shoes of Cam because he's getting towards the end of that his career. And uh, yep. we're going to need – we need a lot of help on defense from stopping these guys from running the ball all over us. So, I went defensive tackle. Jaden Crumity. Yep. I uh, can't argue the pick, man. Uh, uh, Six-rounder could, could contribute. And uh, that's one thing with my mock draft, Sean, that I didn't get. And that's one of the deficiencies probably with my draft here. Uh, but – that's it, sometimes I'm, you know, your odd man out, I guess. So uh, good pick. So round six, pick 195. I have the Pittsburgh Steelers taking another super hard name to pronounce, guys. Morris Lufa, Lufu. Morris Lufu, the linebacker from Notre Dame. I probably butchered his name, but he's the linebacker from Notre Dame. Uh, you spell his first name M-A-R-I-S-T. Uh, I really like him. I think he could be a quality late round steal. Like you said about the uh, offensive tackle from Yale coming out of Yale being in the uh, Ivy Leagues. I think this could be another steal guy at the inside linebacker position. Uh, I definitely think he could be somebody that develops into something cool. Uh, so we'll see how this all goes, guys. But these so far are our mock drafts. Woo! Thank God <laughs> we are through them, bro. Because we both hate doing them. We both hate doing them. Because why, Sean? There's just so many options. That's it. There's just, there's so many options that, and so many different kinds of talents and yes. each one could, could actually work. It's just, it's all about what preference, you know, somebody may be looking for. So, you know, um, it's just, it is, it's really hard when you got all this talent to pinpoint it down to one position. So man, yes. these guys have serious big jobs when you're recruiters and it, it would be a fun one. I, I wouldn't mind doing it myself, but man, that is tough. Yeah, was, but you you got to put in hundreds, thousands of hours to just have a good feel for this. You really do. Yeah, I can see that. This was actually the first like real mock draft that I've ever done. And once I started digging into it, I, I thought, oh, boy, is this a, a can of worms? Yeah. Once you open it, there's just so much talent coming out everywhere. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Crazy. And, yeah, you can't even really look for references anywhere because the minute you do, People throw in trades. People do all this stuff. So you really got to kind of break down your own, you know? You really got to just be like, okay, I get this guy. I, I'm trying to fill a need. I'm trying not to fill, or, you know, I'm going for best player available here. What have you, whatever you got, you know, you got to just keep that, those wheels turning. So it definitely shows you that there are a lot of options, guys, out there for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It definitely shows you that there are many paths to take. And we are not sitting here, Sean nor I, saying that this is the definitive way that anybody should go or if it's the right way or the wrong way. We're just throwing in our two cents of who we think will be available at those times. We're not counting in any trades at any point. Uh, so there are several other variables that could throw these all off the rails. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys, let's continue with the chat and make sure that you uh, put anything in there that you want to talk about concerning the mock drafts that we just did. We can highlight anything that you want to highlight. Uh, make sure you're hitting that like button for us as we move through the show here. Steel City Live, only on Mike Drop Sports. Uh, and we answer all these chat questions. We try to keep you up, up to date and up to speed on that. That way, uh, you guys, your voice is heard here on Mike Drop Sports in the show. Uh, we definitely want you guys to be involved as much as possible. And that is why I, I think we have the best damn sports show on the internet, on YouTube. I definitely do. Uh, Vegas TJ or TJG. Uh, the last Pirates game I went to was at Three River Stadium and I left with a broken uh, game used Dale Parabat. Nice. That's a goal. Sweet. Wow. It's a long time wow. ago, man. Long time ago. That's that's it. That's great. If you go into an event like that, all the people that could have got that and you got it, bro. Good job. 
No doubt. It just popped up. Miss Pittsburgh, one month, Mike Drop Mafia member. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, awesome. Cool shit. No doubt. Craig Werlow, I think a team is going to reach for a quarterback, which will throw the draft all out of whack. Uh, yeah, and I think a lot of people were anticipating that, Sean. I think like guys like J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, they're reaches. They're, they're going to get your ass fired probably. I don't think they're guys that are plug and play, bro. Uh, I just don't think so. Uh, I think that you'll see some of those guys even slide. And that's another variable, Sean. What about guys that slide out of the first round uh, because of maybe an issue or something? Or maybe guys, you know, you see players that just drop for no reason. Nobody knows why. Just because evaluators didn't value them that high. Uh, so that could throw it all off whack. Do you look for any of those crazy type things coming here in the first round? I, yeah, I always want to look for something like that. Like and one of them in particular is Jackson Powers Johnson, just because I've heard of him going early. And then I've also heard of him going way late. Nobody really knows where this guy is going to go. So I, I'm curious myself to see what happens. And nobody knows, like not even these, these so-called professional analysts. <laughs> this is all just a shot in the dark with our own opinions. And that's yeah. what makes it so fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, you know, keeps guys like that weirdo Mel Kuyper employee. Guys that can be wrong every year, hands down. Makes zero sense when he's talking about it. Uh, I really, I true, I cannot take that guy. He has just been on TV for too long. That makes <laughs> zero sense, bro. Zero damn sense, man. He's never right. It's like, dude. If you're never right, why are you still here? I, I don't know. I just think it's crazy. So it just goes to show you that a guy like him, you could be wrong all the time and still be employed. Uh, Wesley Kuypers. Boyd, what's up? What's that? Oh, it's the Kuipers. Those guys are so connected in the ESPN like analyst yeah. world. And uh, it, it doesn't matter if you're Mel or Glenn. These guys are in the big show somehow, some way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who you know, bro? No <laughs> doubt about it. Uh, Wesley Boyd, I like that theory, Jason. Thank you, man. Justin, what's up, my friend? Uh, Danny George, best damn uh, show on Steelers football. Thanks, man. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I like how uh, Sean has helped me, too. Uh, I feel like we really try to make sure you guys are involved, and I think that's the most important part of this, guys. Uh, it's not about Sean. It's not about my, myself. It's about you guys getting your voices out there, putting your comments in there, Letting people know what you think, man. Steeler fans got good football heads, and I really like to hear what you guys got to say. You know, uh, it's it's valuable. You know, it's very valuable. Me too. Uh, Steven, yeah, definitely, man. Stephen Carpenter. Only concern is MC's route tree. Uh, he has thrown uh, a ton of screens in Kentucky. Uh, he was thrown a ton ton of screens in Kentucky. His yards after catch ability is undeniable, but hopefully. He can create separation at the next level. Yeah, I agree. He did get a ton of those, and you see those on a lot of his highlights, Sean. Uh, he was talking about Mal uh, Malachi Corley, a uh, guy we both picked. Uh, but I really do think that he can get that separation. I do think he can play that game of underneath screens, quick slants, quick outs. I think that that could work for a guy like Malachi, huh? Oh, absolutely. And it's such a it's a, such a key element to have for an offense, you know. Um, you got to have those guys that are quick on their routes and, you know, and with the great footwork and, and uh, we lost Deontay Johnson. So we need to get a good route runner in there that can do those types of things. Yeah. And that's what Steven's concerned with. Maybe he can't run all the routes, uh, but I think he can run them. The ones he can run. I think he runs with precision. I think he's quick. I think he's fast, like you said, and uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes because yes, Western Kentucky, smaller school, may not be able to do the things some of these bigger schools can do, you know. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, but I really like him. Sean likes him. I like him. I think it's a good pick. Uh, we'll see how it goes, Stephen. But I can definitely see your concern there, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Denise Marie, what's up? Beer Malls took a look at Weird Hair Kuiper's Mock. His draft's all over. That dude over-examined. Uh, yeah, dude, he's just crazy to me. I, I just can't get it. I got to get him out of my head. He'll make me nuts. I hate his hair. I hate I hate his takes. Uh, I don't understand how he's employed, and he is made to be like a football god, and he is not that. Uh, JD, what's up? I love the emojis, Mitch Pittsburgh. Yes, guys, get those emojis, Miss Pittsburgh's in there using, guys. Uh, get those emojis. 99 cents a month. There's one of me. 
There's one of Sean. There's Steelers. There's Terrible Towels. There's Mike's. There's all types of stuff. So use them. We're going to update them too because I'm going to, I've been working on some better ones. So we're even going to add some, take some away, all that shit. So uh, definitely it'll be cool. All right, Big Stretch 357. That's one of the reasons why I like the page. You go to the other podcasts and you aren't heard. Thank you for hearing this, gentlemen. Yes, absolutely. I think the same thing, man. And that's one of the reasons I started this. And uh, I felt like, too, that's why Sean started coming around because he started making comments. That's how we started talking. So you meet good people, you know? That's my theory, Sean. You meet yeah. good people when you talk. <laughs> and a lot of these times you'll you'll have these uh these shows on youtube or on tv and and uh they'll be talking about some stuff and it's kind of boring and you go into the comment section and you got all kinds of great stuff going on people like actually making real football yeah. logic makes sense and mm -hmm. these guys that are running the show they don't even acknowledge it and maybe it's because the 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 chat's bringing better content and uh yeah <laughs> maybe out of that. <laughs> dude, I really got to say that because like sometimes, dude, I don't have all the answers. Sean don't have all the answers. We run out of shit to say too, just the same as everybody else. But you guys will throw a comment in there that'll send it into a whole nother direction, which is really the cool, the cool part about it, you know? So make sure you're hitting that like button for us as we move through, guys. Uh, I just want to bring up a little bit of Steelers news. The Steelers signed back another kicker. Uh, Matthew Wright, uh, he's a familiar face. He's been on the team before. Uh, Matthew Wright returns to the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, so you know what this is, Sean. Just uh, loading up for camps, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They got to get some uh, They got to get some people out there that can kick, you know, and bring in a little yeah. more competition. We, we yeah. saw what Kelsey Harvin brought, and we got the boss, but, you know, how long is he going to stick around for, you know? And I love the boss, by the way. Yeah, you got to just always be looking at guys, Matthew Wright. But I think they're just camp legs, you know, just guys that kick and camp. Like you said, competition, just have fun, keep shit going, keep guys motivated. Uh, I think Boz will be around probably till the end of his career, if you ask me. But I could be wrong. Who knows? Uh, it's just one of those things. Yeah, I like the way he kicks. He's uh, he's a beast, bro. Uh, we're yeah. very, very lucky to have uh, somebody that kicks like Matt Boswell. Uh, in Pittsburgh, and it is just something special to see. Um, no doubt about it. Kenny Pickett changes his number with the Eagles. What number did he get? Let's see, guys. I'm going through the articles of the day, Steeler News. I always do this. This one's from Noah uh, Strackbine. He changes. He'll wear the number seven in Philly. Oh, oh God. Uh, the number seven, like Elway, like the what? Big Ben. Big Ben? Come on. No way. He Michael should wear number Vick? two because that's what he's always going to be, number two. Yeah. How about number three? Because he's probably always going to be number three. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even four. He ain't got no balls. He ain't got no cojones, dude. He don't, don't want to compete. Yeah, he doesn't want to compete, bro. Yeah, I don't like non-fighters, bro. You can have him in Philly. Non-fighter. That equals coward to me. Uh, I don't know. I'm really pissed off about the Kenny Pickett thing because I had a lot of – even Sean knows, dude, I put a lot of uh, stock into Kenny Bigot for a long time. And that is a disappointing thing when somebody you really back and you really, really, you know, have high hopes for turns out to just be a straight coward, dude. I hate that. I hate it. He hmm. fooled everybody. He fooled everybody. Yeah. Magical preseason. My ass, dude. What a coward. What a coward. Mm -hmm. That's another learning lesson I have, bro. I'm never being sold in preseason again, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, never, never, dude. I won't trust anything at all, dude. Yeah, right? balls like a Jeff Reed and Gary Anderson. Amen. He can wear that the seven, but he'll never be number seven. Absolutely, he will not be number seven. Uh, <laughs> foot's big. Thank you, dude. Thank you for the uh, super chat, my friend. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate it. I don't know how you celebrate it. It said, let's celebrate it. It wouldn't let me. I don't know what it's doing, but I'm celebrating you. That's your fifth one, dude. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, thank bro. Thank you. Uh, Miss Pittsburgh also had a super chat earlier, and I wanted to thank her about that, too. That was uh, awesome, dude. Uh, you had a super chat on one of the other videos, and I thank you. That uh, that was pretty awesome. Appreciate you, Miss Pittsburgh, as always. Uh, also, Foots Big with some cool... Uh, Always uh, doing that, and I appreciate that, man. 
Uh, beer malls. I watched some Jeff Reed clutch field goals. Dude was the man. Absolutely. And who does he endorse? Mike Drop Sports. <laughs> <laughs> man, I just hit I it. it. I hit it, man. My pipes, they got warmed up. And I just bro. hit that note. I hit that note, bro. It was beautiful. Yeah, like me. Beauty. Beautiful. Like so. Mike Drop Sports. <laughs> it was just that, you know, it flows, bro. It flows. <laughs> Foot's in the house. No doubt, Foot. You're in the house. He fooled us. He did, Miss Pittsburgh. Yes, he did. Let's up and go. That's from Beer Malls. Absolutely. Let's up and go. Let's hit the like button. Let's continue to get this show cranking here on Mike Drop Sports. It's the show Still City Live. I'm Jason, your host, and I am joined by Sean, as always. Here on a Wednesday, uh, and uh, we are cranking along, man. Cranking <laughs> along. Uh, yes, also, are. let's go here, Sean. Uh, like I said, everybody's picking somebody different. It's been changed like it's been you change your underwear. Well, at least for most people, some people may wear underwear a lot longer. I don't know. Some may turn them inside out. I don't know. You know, hey, it is what it is. Teach their own, Sean. Uh, <laughs> but this time, a lot of people are starting to say, well, it's not going to be a Marius Mims. It's not going to be anything else. It's going to be Graham Barton. What do you think, uh, Sean? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I just think it's a crapshoot, and uh, I don't think anybody truly knows. I don't think anyone really knows either. And Graham Barton, you cannot go wrong with the guy. He no. is one of the better ones in the draft. But, you know, it's all about who they pick, number one, and which leads to the rest of your draft. It's 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 crazy. Like. Like I said, we started getting into this mock draft thing, and I wanted to pick Barton. I really did. Yeah. I just, he didn't fit into where the rest of my picks was going to play out. So I didn't, he didn't make it on mine. And, it, you know, and that's, it's going to affect even the team mm. like that. Depending on where their other needs are and who's available in the draft, they may not get him. So yeah. that's a good one to call. Amen, man. And it's a puzzle. Like Sean just said, it didn't fit in other pieces that he was putting together. And that's what Omar Khan, Andy Weidel, Mike Tomlin, the scouting department, that is where that the issues come. They have to put this puzzle together, Sean. They have to find the right pieces that match. And you just can't look and say, well, we want that player because we like him and his name's big because everybody's propping him up. You got to do your homework, man. You really, really do. And there is a, some gems in this draft that are overlooked that a lot of people aren't going to even know their names, myself included, you included. We're going to see a guy emerge from this draft, Sean, like we do every year, that nobody even knew who the hell they were. You know what I mean? Every time, every year. That's right. No doubt, dude. No doubt about it. Um, another article that uh, pops up, as we always do. I always do this for you guys, and you may not even know I do it. Uh, but I bring up Steelers News and Notes. And, I, and it brings up articles. And I always like to touch base on some of the daily articles. And I think that that's an important thing here on the show. Also, touching base with every you know little key point that's been out there for the Pittsburgh Steelers for each day. I just think that that's something cool to do, too. Uh, but the, this one is from CBS Sports. And this one's saying the Steelers actively trying to acquire a veteran wide receiver either in free agency or via trade to replace Deontay Johnson. This just came out three hours ago. Uh, I thought we put some of this to bed, and I thought the Pittsburgh Steelers were going to roll with Van Jefferson, Quez Watkins, and just go into the draft and try to find somebody like a uh, 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 Malachi Corley. Uh, couldn't think of his name there for a second. But I thought, you know, that's pretty much the game plan. Do you think there's still strong possibility, Sean, that this happens? I would be really surprised if they went ahead and brought in an older wide receiver when when we need young guys out there that's going to come out there and uh, bring a, a certain type of element that we need. To, we need guys that's going to complement George Pickens, like I was saying. And a lot of these older guys that's available, who can do that? I feel personally that there's better talent in this upcoming NFL draft and you can you can you can fill those holes more efficiently through the draft. That's just my own opinion. So yeah, I don't see. I would be surprised if they went with an older receiver. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, you know it, it is. I, I just don't know. I don't get what they're trying to do here. But this guy's saying this uh, law law uh, 
Lockin' Fora. Uh, Fora, he's saying that the Pittsburgh Steelers could do this at any day now, that they could pull the trigger on a trade. Uh, they could still pick up one of the guys that are remaining on the uh, open market, the Tyler Boyds, the Michael Thomases, the Russell Gage, Hunter Renfro, uh, DJ Shark, uh, McCole Hardman, Michael Gallup, uh, as far as possible. Uh, trades are concerned. They're saying T. Higgins. Uh, things like that, or futures of T. Higgins and Justin Jefferson with the Bengals and Vikings, respectively. Those ones are off the table, but they're thinking there's other options out there. Uh, so we'll see, like maybe like a Tyler Lockett or something like that is what they're saying in this article. So um, Tyler Lockett's a guy that Russell Wilson's played with before in Seattle. So, I mean, I don't know if that would be out of the realm of possibility. He is a less expensive option, you know. So what, are you going to get these guys for like a vet minimum, minimum or something compared to? Nah, yeah, I don't know what lock. It wouldn't be a vet minimum, I don't think. But, you know, trading option wise is what they're talking about. Okay, like uh, yeah. Tyler Lockett, uh, he's on the Seahawks still, you know. So that's what they're talking. I don't know, Sean. I just think it's I just think it's a lot of talk, man. I really, really do. Uh, I think their time has passed on trying to bring in one of these guys. Uh they already added a couple guys. I, I don't know. I just think the draft's a better option, like you said. And I think that's the way the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to go. It's been quiet with Omar Khan for a while now for a reason. They they made their moves. They got some big splash moves already in the free agency. Now they got to make their splash moves in the draft, and I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and if it's if something did happen, guys, I think it would happen like right around the draft time. And the reason I think that would happen is because they're getting, getting draft capital or they're trying to move some pieces around, like something like that. Like I could see like a draft day trade. Like those are the trades I can see happening, Sean. Something that has to do with like increasing your value in the draft, like your amount of cap, draft capital, things like that. That's the trades I can see happening. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, like, beer mold. Go ahead. Oh, I was just on that note. I'm just going to add that I really hope when they're trying to make these big moves with the receivers and these guys that are already been in the league, you don't want a big name receiver. Like, let's just say Brandon Ayuk, for example. The guy comes with a huge price tag, and it doesn't make sense with what the yeah. Steelers are going to do right now and with the money that they have in free agency uh, that they've already spent. Like, mm. they, they got to make their moves in the draft. Like, so I, I would stay away from those big name receivers. What you just said too earlier, it goes back to that, guys fitting the puzzle pieces together. And I know some people don't want to hear like when we say like these things can't happen, it might not be a good move because everybody likes blitz and glamour and splash and big moves. I get that. I, I like it too. Uh, but realistically, these things typically don't happen a lot. You know, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. JD asked who was left at wide receiver. Yeah, I read those ones off JD. If you didn't hear me, let me know. I'll read them again. Dang it, I'm late again. You're all right, D. It's the off season, baby. We're we're relaxed in here now. <laughs> we're we're still during the season. That's when we're laser focused, baby. Laser focused. What's up, uh, D? Yeah, hey, man, Mal Mills. I would love to see Calvin Austin the third get a real look at uh, the number two wide receiver job. Can he do it? Can he do it? Does his size limit him? You know? Do you think his size limits him, Sean, at, at being the number two? Do you think he'll always be more of a gadgety type player? Man, I, I do feel like his size kind of won't help him much. You know, he can kind of get bullied around out there. But then again, I have seen him. You know, he's got the speed and shiftiness to maybe that can come to his advantage too. I personally would – I wouldn't see him as a number two. You, you know, we're moving in the direction of guys like George Pickens out there who, who are, you know, over six feet tall who can get up in the air and – and grab the ball over the defender and and be physical and and uh, throw people down and be a big blocker and um, yeah yeah, I, I, yeah might be man I I kind of I don't know he's I would have to see a little bit more we need to see him for next year you know are you froze Sean hello I think Sean is froze guys <laughs> I think Sean is froze guys so hey. We'll see here. Sean, are you back? Let me know. Sean, are you back? Can anybody hear me? You guys can still hear me, right? Let me know in the chat as we roll through here, guys. Make sure you can still hear me. Uh, but I think Sean froze on us. 
All right, guys, let's continue to roll here. Uh, folks, is there a trade deadline? No, it's uh, November uh, 5th. It used to be October 31st. Uh, they moved it back a little bit. Okay, beer malls, good deal. Okay, Denise can still hear me. Dropped off the show. I don't know what happened, Sean. You're like froze there, man. See if you can join back up. Hit the button. See if you can join. I'll try to join you back in, man. Uh, but we're going to wrap up anyway here soon anyway. Now, yeah, he's gone. See if you can join back in, Sean. I'm sorry. I don't know why you dropped off the show. I got good connection here, man. But anyway, guys, we'll continue to roll through. Uh, sorry, Sean. Uh, big stretch. Yeah, Kenneth Grant. There he is. He's back. My boy is back. All My right. screen just went white. I don't know. <laughs> We're in the vortex. Uh, <laughs> all right, dude. Let's get back to the show here. The trade deadline. Yeah, that's all, or no, now uh, November 5th or something like that. Uh, November 5th. Yeah, they moved it back two weeks or one week. Uh, big stretch. Yeah, Kenneth Grant from Michigan is going to be one of those sleepers in the drafts. He gives me Vince Wilfork vibes. Big stretch. Just like you're saying, dude. There's so many of these guys. This is an exciting draft, Sean. I think this talent level in this draft is deep, bro. I really, really do. I do too, bro. You can you can't go wrong with. I mean, there's so much talent in almost every single position. And and hey, man, if you got a guy that resembles Vin Wilfork, that guy was a beast, man. And that'd be a great addition, huh? Yeah, yeah, no doubt, dude. That'd be monster. Hey, D, if your dryer's smelling like that, you might have a. a you know, some dryer lint build up in there. Take that back off, blow it out, and make sure that belt's good. There's a belt that runs on there that turns it. Uh, I've fixed many of dryers. It just depends on how new yours is. So, uh, yeah, check that shit, man. You get all types of stuff built up in there. Sometimes things get caught. You never know. There's lots of things, but you got to pop that back off, baby. Get into it. Get into it. All right, Nate Dog. What about the Brian, Brandon Ayuk trade? Uh, Nate Dog, I think it's just. I think it would be craziness. Uh, it makes no sense. Yeah, it's a sign and trade. Big bucks. Are you, do you want him over George Pickens? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Do you want to pay for a wide receiver now? Just like Sean said, the money don't make sense. The deal don't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. The puzzle pieces don't fit, at least in our eyes, over here on the on uh, Steel City Live. Uh, Wesley Boyd, uh, Miles Boykin just went to the Giants. I was about to bring that up, Wesley. It was on part of my uh, article list that I was bringing up. But yes, Miles Boykin, a former Pittsburgh Steelers specialist, a guy that's been with the Steelers for a while, former Baltimore Raven, uh, but spent much time with the Steelers on the special teams. Uh, has done a little bit in the uh, in in the wide receiver department. But Sean, your feelings now that you won't see Miles Boykin anymore. Hey, man, that's okay with me. You know, um, like I said, there's just so much talent in the draft coming up. You really can't go wrong. You know, one guy leaves, we're going to bring in the next superstar, and it's the next man up, and that's just the way it is in the NFL. Yeah, and he probably thought, too, hey, they brought in Quez Watkins. They brought in Van Jefferson. They let go Deontay. He probably didn't think he fit into the puzzle anymore, and that's part of it, too, you know? Yeah, you got to fit in the puzzle. That's for sure. That seems to be the theme today. Yes, puzzle fitting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if it don't fit, just jam it in. <laughs> uh, beer malls, folks, because we got Cam Hayward that hasn't signed or restructured yet. So I agree it's coming down to the draft. Uh, I think you're going to see some restructure, Sean. I really, really do. Beer malls, I think you'll see some of these restructures. Cam is at too high of a cap hit for his productivity last year. But I think the Steelers will respect him enough to continue to pay him that salary. But I think the Steelers find a way to manipulate that salary and kick the can down the road a little bit. And I think Cam Hayward will be on board because, let's face it, his time is coming to a close for his chances to win a Lombardi trophy. Sean, do you think Cameron Hayward is going to be unwilling to restructure his contract? I Man, that's a tough question because, you know, he's – He's just getting up there in age, and how much? How many years does the guy have left in the tank? He kind of showed signs that he was almost—he was contemplating on retiring already once. So I mean, I—I I don't see him sticking around for too much longer. And if they don't do something big this year, he's probably going to retire. But let's say they make a deep run into the playoffs, and they just—they just don't quite make it to the big game, but they came close. 
maybe then Cam wants to try one more year, you know, um, with uh, yeah. with what they feel. But I don't see him wanting to stick around for too much longer. Yeah, and two, no matter how you restructure, guys, restructures, all they are are extensions. We've said it here on the show before. Restructures are not. Extensions, they are. That's what they are. They are true extensions. And you are just doing what? Pushing money down the road, dude. You will come due. The, the rent comes due, baby. You got to pay that money somewhere, somehow. It don't magically disappear. And I got to say, I think teams probably, and I'm not no capologist, but I think teams know that there's usually an increase in cap. And that's why they kick money down the road. Because when cap numbers rise, you know, hey, they can get a little bit of different number there uh, when they kick the money down the road. So we'll see. Cam is a pretty penny contract. Absolutely. Mel Mills, I absolutely hoped he would add some muscle in the offseason. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Stephen Carpenter frozen. <laughs> Dropped me off the show. That was Sean. Sorry, guys. I'm way far behind. Uh, yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, Sean is back. I'm into it. Uh, trying to uh, figure it out. What the F am I looking at? Dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. Do you have uh, volume up or something, Sean? Uh, yeah, my laptop just uh, went on the volume on. I just had to shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard myself. I was like, what am I doing? Turn the volume. I thought I was me. I'm like, what am I hearing? Am I hearing voices? <laughs> am I hearing voices? What's up, Jamie? Just checked in. Who is the player that reminds you, uh, boys, of uh, Will Fork? Uh, who was that player? Uh, Stretch mentioned it. Stretch. It was way up there. Uh, shit, you're gonna have to go back through the draft. Or he's from Michigan. A uh, big stretch put him in there. I don't know who it was. I can't remember. I can't either. Can you remember his name? I can't remember his name. He's from Michigan. Uh, stretch, put that in there again if you don't mind. Teflon John, uh, Antioch, California, tapped in. Home of Najee. Home of Najee. I have the Pittsburgh Steelers maybe taking somebody that might be able to replace your boy and Frank Gore Jr. <laughs> I just think the Steelers get a running back. That's all. I'm not saying he replaces him, but uh, definitely. Kenneth Grant. That's it. I knew Grant. I could not think of that first name. Uh, awesome, dude. Kenneth Grant. That's who he's saying reminds him of Vince Wilfork. So that'd be cool. There are so many sleeper picks, man. There really, really are, uh, guys. Really a lot, dude. All right, guys, we are going to continue here for a few more minutes as we've went for about our normal hour. We're going to start to wrap it up and shut it down here uh, as we move through the show. But make sure you hit that like button for us as you leave or depart or come back in and out. Um, yeah, crush it. Hit the crap out of it. Uh, it really, really helps us, man. Super. Uh, it, it's better than anything. It helps us. The like button definitely is. Uh, so, Sean, anything closing here that you wanted to bring up? Uh, with uh, the mock drafts or anything, uh, anything you see, just any comments or anything? Uh, yeah, actually, I was going to say something earlier, and I and I got distracted, but I wanted to, like, jokingly uh, let everybody know that I crack up every time when, when I'll be watching these shows and moderating, and uh, I'll see somebody come in and say, hey, I'm a Browns fan, and go Browns. <laughs> and then every time, no matter what, you will see Miss Pittsburgh start throwing up those uh the emojis of the the towel the terrible towel and uh, i love that because you know you can come in here and you can praise your team but you're not going to find no browns emojis you're not going to find no other emojis <laughs> except the pittsburgh Steelers. and i love that and i think we should all do that it's so fun uh yeah <laughs> we welcome everybody but boy we will give it to you we will give it to you absolutely <laughs> dude no doubt y'all you two make a great team thank you appreciate that man denise uh, beer malls, dig that urban like black brick background and get up, Sean. Absolutely, Sean got some cool backgrounds, man. He Thanks, definitely buddy. does. Let's go, Titans. Come on, D. <laughs> D. Damn, bro. Damn, D. Titans fan, bro. I didn't know that. He's so in love. He's in love with Mason. He can't let it go. D can't oh. let it go. We're going to have to send D to rehab, bro. He can't <laughs> let it go. D's, he's, D, step back from that ledge, my friend. Cut the <laughs> eyes with it, bro. Cut the eyes. If you love him, you'll let him go. <laughs> yeah. If, if you love really him. love him, let him go, bro. <laughs> if he loves you, he'll back. 
That's right. If he really, truly loves us, he'll come back. You're right, Sean. Just let him go, D. Let him spread his wings. Let him explore his life. <laughs> he let him to become a and, guy. <laughs> to explore and just get out there and experience new things, okay? Yeah, dude. Let him, let him explore. Let him find himself, you know? Damn, Mike Tomlin ain't letting him do that here. God. Damn, D. Damn. <laughs> Got us. Oh, no. Damn, D. Beer malls. This is Steelers country, baby. <laughs> Steeler nation all the way. Miss Pittsburgh will throw up that towel, D. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Jesse <laughs> Miller. <God. laughs> hey, hey, Jesse found the Browns emoji, Sean. <laughs> that's great. You know what? I'm, I'm adding that to the emoji list, guys. The poop emoji got it's just standard. It's got to be in there, you know. Man, that's perfect. That's Who names their team after the color of poop? Why <laughs> the Browns, bro? But that's why? <laughs> I don't know. I've never understood it. I'm still trying to figure out why they signed Deshaun Watson, 250 million dollars guaranteed, bro. Dude. That was the dumbest trade in the history of trades, bro. The dumbest. They That's gave away why, everything for him. It ruined the sport almost. Now look what these quarterbacks are demanding these days, and they're not even proven. It's crazy, dude. I, I just think, and then he's out there talking a little. It's not really talking crap, but talking about how basic the Steelers' defense is and shit. Well, let me tell you something, buddy. Then you're pretty dumb. <laughs> You're dumb. You're an idiot then because you can't beat him. I'm just saying. Let's look up Deshaun Watson's record from oh. four against Pittsburgh. Out of curiosity, my friends, Deshaun Watson's record against the Steelers. Has he ever Let's played him? He's always on the bench. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, he's always in a damn sweatsuit. <laughs> Either that or a massage towel laying on the table waiting to get his massage. That's all he wears. Oh, oh, my oh. God. Hey, Sean, they're so basic. They're so basic. But guess what? He's 0-3. 0-3. Wow. They're basic, bro. They're, ba they're predictable. They're predictable. They're basic. They're predictable. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Who lost that primetime game against the Steelers last year? I believe that was Deshaun Watson. Why? Because what'd he do? Fumble. Fumble. <laughs> Fumble. You did. Yeah. He's already stirring a pot beer malls. Absolutely. Tell him, dude, a guy like him that has all this drama surrounding him that's never going to ever go away. Would you open your mouth, Sean, if you were him? No way, bro. That guy's been in all the limelight for all the wrong reasons. And for him to even open his mouth at all is just astonishing. Like, wow, really? Bro, <laughs> you, have, you have over 20 women like taking you to court. And you want to come out here and talk about how mediocre our defense is? <laughs> yeah. No, and you're 0-3. Yeah, exactly. Look what D put. If that's the Browns emoji, this is the Ravens emoji. It's a big <laughs> <point>. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, you guys <laughs> are genius. <laughs> uh, Miss Pittsburgh waving that towel proud. Keep waving at Miss Pittsburgh. Terrence Weaver. Uh, this is the only Super Bowl the Browns will attend is the toilet bowl. Absolutely. Swirling around. The, the, swirling around. That's all they do, man. Swirling the bowl. Uh, Beer Mall's overpriced, hortable quarterback, Deshaun. Watt, Deshaun keeps stirring the pot. Basically 5-1 and one in the division, bro. Absolute Steelers, 5-1 and one in the division, baby. You're right, big stretch. Run that north, baby. Also, yep. Deshaun Watson, if you don't have any availability, you're always hurt. You always got some legal shit going on because you can't keep your hands off of people. Uh, you're a weirdo. You're a creep. And then you run your jib. You can't beat teams. You call them basic. I, I guess he called himself an idiot, though. I I'm really firmly believing that now. I'm just he's saying. Basically, he's basically saying that he cannot beat a basic defense. Yeah. They're so basic. Why do they light your ass up so much then, too? Why are you on your back all the time when you play them? For real? They, they're basic, bro. I they need like to have basic. us in the press room, bro, so we can just throw these right back at him when he says some dumb shit like that. Yeah. I'm going to get – we're going to make T-shirts, Sean. We still got to get these T-shirts going, bro. But that's another T-shirt idea. 
We're going to put big Deshaun's, we're going to put Deshaun's face uh, while he's laying on the ground, laying on his back in a little caption that says, damn, that's basic. You know, <laughs> that's basic. <laughs> With basic. big cleat marks. Yeah, cleat marks up your backside. Oh, <laughs> dude. Man, does he get me fired up, man. man. Gets me fired up. I don't right, like guys. That, What's that, John? I was saying, I don't like that stuff either, man. I don't like when people blab about them, their lips, especially when they're non-productive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put up or shut up and shutting up. <laughs> Dude, come on, bro. Put up or shut up. Don't talk shit. I don't like the shit talking. I like it a little bit because I know it's coming from dumb people like him that are bleeding the Browns dry and, they're going to ruin their team yet again, man, here shortly. They're going to fall all apart. Their defense just happened to be good. Why? Because they get picked first, like, for 950 years, you know. Uh, right. They jump on the dumbest quarterback in the history of the league, uh, Deshaun Watson. And I say that why? Because he's saying that a team that he has never beaten is basic. So that shows me he's pretty dumb. Uh, right. But anyway. Hey, they're basic, though. They're basic. I got to get off of that. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm all fired up, Jason. His best, Jason. Thanks, man. I'm heated. I'm heated, though. Heated. I can't stand him, man. I cannot stand that dude. I'm sitting here cracking up, too, D. I, I, always, I always love Jason getting fired up, bro. It cracks me up every mm. time. <laughs> I just wish, like, he'd go away. Don't you? Yeah. Is it, along with the Colin Kaepernick shit. I mean, sorry, but that gets me going. I, I'm tired of people bringing up Colin Kaepernick's name. To, and, yes, I still see it in my feed to this day. Every, I know they're jokes. They really are. At this point, they're jokes. But yeah. every time I see it, it still kind of takes the breath away from me. Like, whoa, like, no way. Like, do not bring that guy back to the NFL. Oh, that guy gets me going, bro. Oh, Kaepernick you're talking about. I thought you said Colin Coward. I was going to say, yeah, I don't like his takes either. Yeah, <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, he ain't coming back either. It is what it is. It's like, quit bringing it up. It's been like 10 years. Like, two. I know people want to see Le'Veon Bell. You're out of this league, dude, for how many years? The speed is just, it's insane, dude. You just yeah. can't come back in and be like, yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm ready. I'm ready. No, you can't. You can't do it. Can't do it, bro. Even in like the postseason, like when when you take that bye week in the postseason, that one week is enough to throw that whole team off and out of the rhythm. And then they go back out there the following week and get just trucked because they're not up to football speed. No, it's too hard. Hey, guys, Friday. Ba -na 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 -na. You get the picture. Somebody does. Somebody gets a picture on Friday. You got to be. Oh, you're going to put hole in your backgrounds? Bro, I'm going to do something. Shit, bro. We're going to have to turn the camera on you. We're going to have to watch you. <laughs> going to be watching you, Sean. Breaking shit down. Guys, I have so many cameras over here that I don't use because I'm an idiot. So I need, like, I got all these 4K cameras and shit, and I use a damn phone. Ain't that crazy? Uh, beer malls. I was at the, that Monday night Browns game at Akershire last year. I was screaming, it's over for you, Watson. Get out of here. It's over for you. Absolutely. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. Good job. 3XL on that Deshaun Watson shirt. <laughs> yeah. We're going to come up with some good ones. We, we're getting it cranking soon. We got to get it done, guys. All right, guys. We got to wrap this shit up. We've been going for 74 minutes almost. So we got to get this wrapped up, though. Uh, nice. Sean, Friday, you coming or no? Friday, I will. Oh man, it's tough to call right now for my schedule, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try my best to be there. Yes. All right. So that's a maybe for Sean. I'm here, bro. I'm coming. D, <laughs> peace. Uh, hope you fix that dryer. Don't burn your damn house down. And if you smell smoke, get the kids out. Uh, and you go back in and try to put it out. But you get everybody else out of there first. You, know, you, you, we, you know, D. Since your Titans comment, you know. We, we can, you know, it is what it is. I can't believe you said that, D. <laughs> I, I'm hurt, D. I'm hurt, D. Hurt. Bro. Go Titans. Hurt, D. Damn, take, D. Yeah, it's going to take a little while for us to get over that one, D. Man, he, you, you broke my heart, D. You broke my damn heart, D. Damn. 
shit. <laughs> All right, guys, we're out of here. I, you know, I'm just playing with you, D. What's up, George? I don't download here so soon, George. We've been just on a ta tangent here for the last, like, 15 minutes, my friend. Uh, glad you popped back in, but it'll come back up. It'll download. Clean out that link trap. Oh, my God, I can't wait till Friday. Let's go. That picture's – Miss Pittsburgh, I hope you do win that shit. I hope you do. <laughs> Because I don't want Sean to win it because I'm going to pay 60 damn dollars to send it to his ass, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I want local pickup only on that bastard. But anyway. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for coming to the show. This is Steel City Live. I'm Jason. That's Sean. And uh, we will see you tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so until next time, peace. Later, Sean. Later, Later gang. Thanks, Jason. Have a good night. You too, buddy.